about your your sales floor. Not this one. This mm -hmm. is a builder's floor, but this is two buildings over, I guess it is. Yes. Uh, it's 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 huge. You've got some very unusual ways of showing carpet. You show lots of carpet and you show big big pieces of carpet. Mm -hmm. Talk about your whole philosophy as it relates to that showroom. Well, if you're going to inventory a lot of products, which we do, you have to be able to turn them. And so we want to have as big a footprint, um, I guess that's a pun in carpet terms, um, had to have a big, as big a footprint as you can. So we put them on nice big A-frames, show them in large pieces, and then let the customer feel them, see them, touch them. And then if they want a sample, we have cut samples, we'll let them check out. But that's not just on carpet. We do the same thing on hard surface. Now, uh, you obviously sell more of the product you have on the A-frame than you do the smaller samples elsewhere. Um, we sell a heck of a lot of it. I, I don't know if it's necessarily more, but we, I'd say it's probably about 50-50 situation because everybody has certain tastes and we have 32 products time on carpet we have 32 products times the number of colors we carry so probably if you average four colors probably have 126 different things we stock in carpet but maybe you need 326 to satisfy everybody so that's where the special order comes in but people generally respond better to a big sample would you say on average does that sell more carpet if they see more of it? Sure, sure. I think it helps a lot. It helps push your inventory. Now, how about the layout of the floor? You've got lots of carpet. You've got hard surface sort of on one side of the showroom. Uh, I guess from that, your mix of carpet to hard surface, you probably sell more carpet than you do hard surface, I would say. Is that yeah, we do. We do. Yes. Um, Probably, if you figured how much carpet we sold to hard surface, probably, I'm just guessing, probably 60% okay. on, on carpet to hard surface. Because hard surface covers a large gambit, you know, from your ceramic tile to your yeah. sand and finish hardwood and LVT and so on. And it looks like you do an appreciable business in ceramic tile. We do a good job. I got you. Um, talk about carpet versus hard surface. They tell me carpet is losing share. It would seem like I get an argument on that from you. Um, yeah, I don't. We're doing a lot with hard surface. I think a lot of our hard surface that we're getting now is where people in the past maybe did uh, sand and finish three quarter inch hardwood. Uh, now they're going with other avenues, um, whether it be ceramic or pre finished hardwood or laminate or luxury vinyl plank, whatever, all those categories. Um, I think what we've really done is he, uh, taken a bite out of that market to some extent. But this was, you had mentioned it earlier, Kansas City has been a sand and finish. It was for a long time almost solely a sand and finish market. Real estate agents would tell their customers, you don't want that, you want real hardwood. And now they're finally starting to understand there's advantages to engineered hardwood over the solid three-quarter inch. That's interesting. So that is changing. A little bit. A little bit. Still get people coming in saying, I want that real hardwood. And you explain to them, this is real. Then you explain to them the benefits that they engineered over the solid hardwood. That's, that's interesting. That's interesting. The fact that I guess it's just tr traditional that sand and finish to a lot of people is the way it's done. And if it's not done, I don't trust it, maybe. Mm -hmm. What? You've been in business a good while. You've seen lots and lots of changes, ups and downs. What, what are you most concerned about now in terms of the future? What, what things do you stare at the ceiling and worry about? I don't worry about anything. I, I guess the reason why is we're always thinking about ways to adapt. Uh, we're not a stagnant company. Uh, we've made many changes over the years, and we're going to continue to do so as we think it's necessary. I see. But uh, you, what, talk about the process then. You're thinking ahead. You say, okay, the market's changing. We've got to be able to meet this need, that need, and the other need. How do you do that? How do you physically, what do you know what to think about next? I think we're just 
basically obsessed with it. I mean, you, you have to be thinking about it. If You know, you live it. Um, it's not a hobby. So when you do that, you're always thinking about things you can do different. We talk about it. We discuss it. Um, you know, we'll have a manager's meeting, uh, upper-level manager's meeting uh, every week. We'll discuss different topics, things that are coming up, ideas, things like that. Okay. Now, you're responsible for a lot of going on here in Kansas City, a lot of stores, a lot of people. Mm -hmm. How do you keep tabs on that? Do you, do you have a big software package you use that allows you to have access to all this stuff? Uh, no, not a big software package. Again, we do a lot of Excel spreadsheets and have me get in a car and travel and see the various, uh, our various salespeople in the various locations. Have you ever thought about that? I mean, there's a lot of people selling software that's made specifically for floor covering retail employees. We do some of that. I mean, right now we're doing, uh, like, for instance, our, our measures. Uh, we have an electronic system we use for doing the measures now. Um, where they can do it out in the field. Okay. But as far as the uh, reporting and stuff like that, it's pretty easy when you, Excel has been a program that's been tried and true for years and it's pretty easy to use that to, to follow what's going on. Okay. Now, you showed me something very unique about installation as we walk through, through the warehouse, that you seam, you cut it and seam it in your warehouse. Yes, um, that gives us a lot of advantages. Um, Mark Weber uh, started that years ago. And back when we were doing so much builder business, it allowed us to do a lot more business in less time because they were already ready to go. The guys take the carpets out. The carpets would be seen for the room. If the room was 14 by 16, and the carpet was a 12 foot wide carpet, we'd basically be taking it out there 14 three by 16 three. And on retail, the advantages become even greater. I mean, you have the, the, the story that, you know, the guys, all they do all day are seams. So they're going to be pretty darn good at it. Never going to tell them a seam's going to be invisible because that's, you know, that's not something you can do. Uh, we don't have to take the carpet, drag it out in the driveway, drag the stuff from the driveway into the house. Uh, and then thirdly then, because we pre-seam it, um, you can possibly catch a defect. And so that homeowner is not mad at you the next day because you've told them that, you know, that day ahead of time that, hey, we had a problem with your carpet. If you're planning on taking off work, I'd suggest you go back to work till we get the right carpet in. I see. I like the idea your seamers seam all day long. I mean, the, the people working at your the installers that do the seaming mm -hmm. seam all day long, so they're probably the best seamers in the state. You would think so. Practice makes perfect. Interesting, interesting. They tell me, I've been in this industry over 35 years. The day I came in, I think they told me that installation was the biggest problem in this industry. And a lot of people would almost agree with you that it still is. Mm -hmm. What's your take on that? Well, uh, it's always tough, but uh, I'm very proud of our installers. I think we have a really good crew. Again, back when things were just going crazy, the builder market was... Uh, basically escalated by cheap money and and kind of shady uh, uh, mortgage documents, for the lack of a better word. Um, I mean, then, you know, houses were going up just like crazy. We had to have enough personnel to keep up. Then you basically just, you tried to stay up with the business. Now that things have slowed down a little bit, we were able to weed out some of the installers. Our guys we have are very good. Now, now you had told me that you have tried... Uh Installers that are on the payroll, and you've tried uh, contractors, and the contractor situation has worked out better. For you. Well, we had we were wanting to boast that we had our own people, and that sounds like a good thing. But when you hire somebody and you do it hourly, the motivation goes out for them to work as hard as they can work and and get the job done. So uh, back then, we had a few guys that were subs that we'd use as needed found out the subs were harder workers and did a better job. So we use subs now, but they're pretty much our subs in that they depend on their livelihood for, from the work we give to them. Okay. If you had the ear of the whole industry, what would you say to them? What sort of things would you like to see perhaps people think about more? Installation or anything else? That's a tough question. <laughs> Because you do have the ear right right now, and uh, I know a lot of people were were 
feeling very strongly about certain standards in the installation of me. Uh, I know there's, uh, you know, you have people that are certifying the installers and so on and so forth. And I think it's just a matter of, I mean, if you don't mistreat your people, you treat them right and, uh, you know, if they have an extra cost involved, you take care of them. Um, I don't necessarily think you need to have a certified, so-called certified installer. Um, main thing, if they put the floor down and it's a good job and you don't have any problems, that's as certified as you need. You know, it's... it's yeah, it's, yeah. Um, how do, it doesn't sound like you change a lot of installers. It sounds like the ones you have are probably work with you for... for a, good a lot of them time. have, yes. How do you... Some, somebody comes in and says, I'm an installer, they're looking for a job. What do you do to separate them from, or what do you do to, to convince yourself that they could make you proud? Well, we've got to obviously try them uh, on a job, and we usually try them maybe on a small rental house or something like that, where you're, you're, if you mess up, you can go back and get taken care of pretty quickly. Um, you don't want to send them out on a full house with, you know, carpet that, that cost a, a mint and, and, and hope they do a good job. You've got to make sure they can do it first. I got you. I got you. And a lot of times our guys, um, you'll have a helper that works with a guy, a lead guy, and he eventually becomes proficient enough that he can become a lead man. That's where we get a lot of our installers. I got you. I got you. Um, what sort of things do you see yourself contemplating in the future? You're going to add something, subtract something, get into something? Great. Well, our market, um, we have really not been as strong as we want to be in the shop at home market. Um, and that's internet driven. Um, so we have been doing a lot of work with the internet market uh, through uh, our site, through calls from there and so forth. But we still need to refine that. And that's where my growth is probably going to come within the next year. I see. Um, so that would be a van, people going out primarily, I guess, in the evening or... Afternoon. As needed, whatever. Um, I'm also finding out as we're doing it, it's very important to qualify. Um, a lot of times people have you do a dry run out there to go be one of six or seven or eight people that are measuring. And we have a guy that goes out and does measures. I don't want my shop at home people uh, doing that. I want them out there hopefully selling product, not just going out there to measure a house and give comparative bids. But you see that as something customers feel very strongly about, or certain types of customers. Sure, because you have, I mean, it's been this way for a long while. You have both parents working in the house. They don't have a lot of time to get out, or their schedules separate them. So they have you come in, bring in samples, and, and that will be our growth next, this next year. Bob, I really appreciate you spending some time with us and Thank giving you. us an education here. I'm very impressed with your operation. You Thank you very much. Out. I'm with Bob Bales. Bob, th thanks very much again. Uh, Bob is with Weber's Flooring and Joe's Carpet Outlets. We are, they are four locations. We're in the Kansas City market. And this is Talk Floor TV.